Good morning, boys and girls, and thank you so much for joining me and my friend Steve the Box for Chapel today. I've got some very exciting personal news to tell you. These aren't Steve the Box's relatives, they're moving boxes. Because I bought a house! I'm so excited for me and my family to have somewhere to go to after work and school. It's a very exciting thing. But before Mrs. Brazil, my son, and I can move in, it needs a little bit of work. I hope you guys don't mind watching me do a little bit of work today. Come on. Oh, I tore up the carpet and I found these awesome hardwood floors. Now all I have to do is clean up all the mess. Let's put it all in one pile at least, I guess. Yeah, this is tricky to get the smaller pieces. You know, it's really too bad that no one has invented a tool or something that would help me clean up all this mess. Wait, Steve, what's that you have? A broom? Let me see that. Oh my goodness, what an excellent tool to help me clean up this mess. Yes, there we go. Oh my goodness, with this perfect tool for cleaning up messes, this became no problem at all. I'm so glad I had this tool handy. Thanks, Steve. Well, now that the floor is cleaned, let's go hang some pictures. All right. Well, I'm glad I learned my lesson on needing tools. With that knowledge, hanging a picture should be no problem. I can't just push the nail into the wall. That would never work. First thing first, we have to find a good spot. Some of you might be thinking, Mr. Andrew, we can see the light switch on the wall. Why are you hanging your picture so low? I think people hang pictures too high, and when you buy a house, you can make your own picture hanging decisions. Well, this spot looks good, good as any, right? I've got my tool in my other hand. I've learned my lesson. Are we ready? Here we go. Wait a minute. Something's not working. I've got my tool. I've got my sponge. Why isn't the nail going in? Oh, you can't just have a tool, you need the right tool? <sighs> that makes sense. Probably should have used my hammer, huh? Mrs. Brazil is not gonna be happy when she finds out I tried to paint the walls with the hammer. <sighs> well, this is exhausting. Let's go sit down. Ugh. It is good to know that I'm going to need to use all of my tools if I hope to get this place ready in time. Did you know God has something to say about the tools we use in our life too? In fact, when he made us, he knew that we'd need tools. Just like I need tools like a broom when I'm faced with a cleaning situation, I need to use my God-given tools when I'm faced with situations in my life. One of those tools is, well, the people he's put in our lives. Even back with Adam and Eve, God knew that we weren't supposed to go through life on our own, and so he's given us the tool of parents, like we celebrated on Mother's Day, uh, the tool of friends, and for some of us, even siblings that we can reach out to when we're in need. Ecclesiastes says this, Two are better than one, for they have a good reward for their hard work. When one falls down, the other can lift his friend up. And later in the Bible, it goes on to say when we're surrounded by God's people, we can help uh, stick to our goals and be encouraged because we lift each other up. Who are some people that God has put in your life that you can love and remind you that you are loved too? Another tool that God has given us is the Bible. If the Bible is a tool, what tasks do you think it helps us with? Not only does it tell us all about Jesus and what he's done for us, but the book of Hebrews actually says this, the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to divide the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. I don't know if you've ever thought about God's word like a sword, but the Bible tells us that it helps us to know right from wrong. It cuts right through the confusion and helps us make decisions. When you're faced with a decision, think about what God's word would say about the choice you make. And finally, there's one more tool that I want to talk about with you guys today. And I love this tool because it's almost a universal tool. It's good for any situation that we're in or any task that we have. And that is the tool of prayer. Prayer is a tool we can use at any time to go to God about anything. We can use the tool of prayer to ask God for help when we're stressed. 
We can use prayer to give thanks to him or to confess our sins or to be comforted. When we're faced with a situation that's bigger than we can handle, we can use prayer to ask God to take care of it for us. Prayer is a tool that we can never use too much of. And it's a reminder that God is always with us. But how awesome is it that God has given us all of these tools for our life? But here's the thing. These tools won't do us any good if we don't use them. Just like I might have a hammer, but it won't do me any good if I keep it locked in my tool shed all the time. And it would be silly to try to build something or pound a nail into the wall without one. It's just as silly to try to go through life without using these tools that God has given us. So, uh, allow the people around you, like parents or friends, to help remind you that you are loved and be encouraged. Use God's word to help you make choices. And use prayer to go to him about anything because he loves you and wants to be with you. You know, all of these tools remind me of the ultimate tool that God used to fix a problem that we couldn't fix. Our sin was a problem that was bigger than any tool that we could try to bring on our own and we could never fix it. So our God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross and rise again to forgive us of our sins and give us the hope of eternal life with him. And that is news worth celebrating. So let's use one of the tools that God has given us and go to him in prayer. This is a repeat after Mr. Andy prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for the tools you gave us to help us in any situation. Thank you for friends and family. Thank you for your word. And thank you for prayer. Help remind us to use them every chance we get. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, and I love these tools, but something that's kind of cool is God has given us so many more tools even beyond what we talked about today. See if your family can come up with a few more tools that God has given you guys. And finally, I have one challenge for you guys this week. God's word is an awesome tool, but it's hard to use it if we don't know what's in it. So my challenge is this. With your parents, find one verse that you can remember all week long to help you through situations. Maybe it's Joshua 1.9, a reminder to be strong and courageous. Maybe it's Proverbs 3 verse 5, a reminder to trust in God about everything. Whatever that verse is, spend some time in his word and find one verse to help, to help you get through situations this week. Well, thank you for joining Steve the Box and I. Let's go sing some songs with Mr. Josh. Well, good morning, Trinity. Thank you so much, Andrew, for that awesome reminder to use the tools that God has given us. And one of the best tools, boys and girls, that Jesus gave us was himself, the word. He came, he took on flesh, and he gave us the Bible so that we would know who this guy is, that we would know who Jesus is, this guy that loves us, that died for us, and gives us peace and comfort through whatever it is we're facing. So we're going to sing a song today about standing on him, standing on the solid rock. This is a song from a month or two ago, a song of the month. So I encourage you guys to get loud, get rowdy, and sing it out with Charlotte and I this morning. All right, here we go. Seeing the clouds rolling, I can feel the winds they try to shake me. I will not be moved, my feet are on the rock. I can feel the waters rise, I can hear the howling lies that haunt me. Rock, 
rocker stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. Christ the solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet around the rock On Christ the solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet around the rock When I feel my hope my ground to break Yes, I will cling to your unchanging grace Yes, let the waters come Amen. May our feet stay on the rock, Trinity. And I pray that you guys would stick around and hear and see this reminder video of who we get to sponsor this month with our chapel offerings. Have a great day. Good morning, Trinity. I hope you were blessed by today's chapel service. Watch this following video about a Christian ministry called Love for a Child. The video will explain the people that they minister to. You can support them with your chapel offerings. Chapel offerings can be mailed to Trinity Lutheran School, and I'll make sure it gets to love for a child. Hey, Trinity, raise the praise. I remember seeing my mom get zip-tied, thrown in the back of the van and taken to jail. I was put in the back of the police car and then taken to this cubicle. I was told, like, we don't have a home for you right now. You have no one to take care of you. I thought I got robbed out of my childhood. In third grade, I was left to defend by myself. Made a lot of my own food for a while. Figured out how to bake cakes. Ate a I ate a lot of dry cereal. I didn't have any money or anything. The only time I saw my mom was maybe at the first of the month to come pick up a check and then leave again. Sent us to a children's homeless center. And then from there, they treated us like we were criminals. Being like in foster care for a child, all, all you think is when you first are taken away from your family that like you did something wrong. That you were the one that did something wrong. Eventually you start thinking that like, maybe your family just didn't want you anymore. It's a hard thing to think when you're little, like your family just gave up on you and that you just, you just didn't want to try anymore. When you're little, you need support. You need someone to say like, I love you and that like, I'll be there for you. And for these foster care kids, like there's no one to talk to. On the way here, it's just me and a whole bunch of kids just riding. And I didn't really talk too much because I didn't know anyone. I was a little nervous. And then we got off the bus and so a whole bunch of grown-ups just going wild. And I really wasn't scared anymore because there's like a whole bunch of people just having fun, really. I was always cautious because things weren't necessarily always safe at home. And me feeling safe at the camp for the love for a child was one of the first times in my whole life that I ever felt safe. It's people that just talking to me, like checking up on me, make sure I'm okay. People just paid attention to me. I felt like I could be a natural kid. I realized here that I want to be in an environment that's like this, that that's good, that's not toxic. I didn't want to sell drugs. I didn't want to do drugs or drink or anything. It gave me the hope that things will get better. In uh, 2012, I started high school. Love for a Child would show up every once in a while, just check up and see how I was doing. That helped. I ended up graduating high school, and I really wasn't supposed to do that. Now I'm in college to actually become a cop, and 
one of the reasons why I want to become a cop was just to, just to help people. And that hopefully, like, one day, come in an encounter with a kid that maybe just caught up in the wrong crowd. Me and you might have came from the same neighborhood. You don't have to be like everyone else there. As long as you are determined that you can make it. Just you have to put your mind to it. You're not trapped. The moment when I first found out that I could become a camp counselor, I was actually really excited because I finally felt like I could give back to a greater cause. There is a need for this camp. You can just have one exposure, someone showing that they care. Just because you're dealt the bad hand in the beginning doesn't mean that you should have a bad hand for your entire life.